stitching friends. I'm Amy. I am the Globetrotting Stitcher. I'm really happy to be back with you today. Uh, I hope that you have all been doing well. If you are a new viewer uh, and are just finding us for the first time, welcome. I hope that you enjoy what we're doing here and that, um, that you enjoy all the beautiful stitching that we have to share with you. And if you're a returning friend and subscriber, welcome back. Um, really, really glad to have you with us and um, are so thankful that you share a little piece of your life with us every few weeks and, and are interested in sharing a little slice of ours. Um, so on that note, I just wanted to kick off by saying a, a truly heartfelt thank you to all of you for your very kind comments and your support um, on our last video where we talked about the, the challenges that my dad's been having following his surgery. Um, you know, I have heard many other floss tubers and people in the stitching community talk about what a wonderful community it is and how kind and, and supportive. And to be on the receiving end of that really was just amazing. And um, I can't thank you enough. It was, it really lifted my spirits. And I just so appreciated all the, the good thoughts and the healing thoughts and the prayers and the light and all of the good things you sent my dad's way. Um, he is he is doing pretty well. We've had one more kind of ugh with him, but um, but he's definitely on the road to recovery. So um, I he was great. He did well the whole time I was in Nairobi, and I'll share a little bit about the trip later on. Um, but uh, a couple of days after I got home, uh, we got a call on a Friday night or a text Friday night, pretty late, that they were heading back to the emergency room because he was running a fever of 106 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really, really high. Um, and so he was, it was not good. It was not good. So they got to him right away. They ran a bunch of tests because they were concerned that um, uh, the inside where his surgery had been done inside where he was healing, they were concerned that maybe he had, um, he was turning septic and spreading infection. And so they wanted to be sure that that's not what was causing the fever. Thankfully, everything checked out okay there. Um, and it was, it ended up just being a bacterial infection that's been related to some of the other complications that he'd been dealing with. And so um, they've got him on an antibiotic now, pretty strong one that seems to be doing the trick and he's doing better. So uh, probably another week before he finishes his course of treatment, but he's up and he's moving around and um, he's not having to use a walker anymore. He's able to get around with a cane. And so we're definitely moving in the right direction. But um, but yeah, thank you so much for, for all of your thoughts and, and your caring words. Um, yeah, as I said, I went to Nairobi. We'll talk about that a little bit later and what a challenging trip that turned out to be. Um, but I wanted to do a quick shout out before we get into the stitching. And then we have some good stitching to share with you today. Um, there is a new floss tuber, who I, floss tuber who I discovered in the last two months. Um, and if you have not found her, I cannot recommend her channel highly enough. Her name is Laura and her channel is Lala D Stitches. Um, she's got, I think, five-ish videos, five or six videos out now. And... Um, I, yeah, run, don't walk. She is absolutely delightful. She is a wonderful new addition to the floss tube community. She is really adorable. She's um, she's just like happy and buoyant and she's just like a, a little bit of a ray of sunshine. I really just enjoy her spirit. Um, on top of that, she stitches a wide variety of beautiful pieces, some really cute things and um, I'm just thoroughly enjoying watching her videos as they come out. Um, and so if you haven't found her, please track her down. One of the other things I love is Laura is a local to me stitcher. So she's in the Seattle area, just like I am. And um, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping that that means that at some point our, our paths will cross um, because uh, yeah, I love meeting uh, local stitchers. So please go welcome Laura to the community and you are gonna really enjoy her channel. I'm, I just, I know you will. You'll hear a little bit more about her later. Um, but for now, I want to get into some finishes and fully finished objects. And I have several things to share with you today. Um, so the first thing I will show you is a piece I think you've only actually seen it once on this channel, just given, um, you know, kind of some of the challenges that we've had as far as filming updates and um, how busy things were for us in October. I don't think you've seen this the first time, the last time you saw it, I believe it was a new start. And this is Easter by the Cricut Collection. 
And I had just done a couple of letters on this when you saw this the last time. Um, and it is now a finished object. So let me show you what it's looking like. Uh, so I stitched this on a piece of 36 count mocha linen, mocha linen by Color and Cotton. And um, I stitched mostly with the called for flosses. There were a couple of places where I had to, um, to choose a darker colored floss to make sure it was gonna show up on my fabric. But, um, but largely, yeah, this is definitely at least at the very least in the same palette as the called for. Um, and then of course we've got all these sweet little buttons. So I took this with me to Nairobi. I didn't get it finished in Nairobi, but um, I was really, really close. I think actually the night that I got home um, I took a nap after I got home and then got up and was feeling like doing some stitching. And so I just spent a couple of hours working on this and knocked it out. Um, so this is really, really sweet. I, um, I thoroughly enjoyed working on this one and I am looking forward to, I've decided I do want to frame it. And so I haven't picked out a frame yet, but I've kind of got some ideas about what I'm looking for. So hopefully I'll be able to get something ordered in the near future and you will see this all fully finished relatively soon. But for now, this is Easter by the Cricut Collection. All right, uh, the next finish I have to share with you um, is uh, kind of a, uh, feels like a bit of a big one to me and a bit of a big accomplishment. This is my sampler and I have been stitching Winter Rose Manor by With Thy Needle and Thread. Um, I have, I stitched this on a piece of 36 count raw Edinburgh, not, yeah. Yeah, raw Edinburgh linen. Yes, that's correct, sorry. Um, and I mostly stitched with the called for flosses. I made a few changes to it. Um, so the last time you saw this, I was uh, really close. I had said I was really close to a finish. I only had a little bit of stitching left to finish in, there was a small basket with some greenery in it and then the, the snow along the bottom with the trees, everything else was done. So I was really close. I knew it was coming up. Um, and so here it is all finished up. Let me just do this really quickly. All right, there it is. So I also took this one to Nairobi with me and I actually finished my stitching on it in Nairobi, which was, which was really nice to be able to get that done while I was traveling. Um, and I absolutely am delighted with how it turned out. I think it's just beautiful. Um, I've started looking at a couple of different options for what I want to do as far as framing it. And I am planning to frame this one myself uh, once I've picked out my frame of choice. But I am really thrilled with how it turned out. I think it's just beautiful. Uh, the other thing that's really great about this design is um, those of you who watch me on a regular basis know that I've been doing this as a stitch along with Sarah. Uh, she is Stitch Addict on Instagram and we have been using the hashtag Roses in Winter Sal. Um, and Sarah also has finished hers. We finished within about a week of one another. Um, and it was really exciting to see her beautiful finish on Instagram. So I would recommend go check that out um, as well. But yeah, it's been really fun to work on this with her. I think we've both really enjoyed it. And um, I'm looking forward to getting this fully finished and up on the wall. I think it's just beautiful. So that's that one. Okay. The next thing I have to share with you is a really special fully finished object. And um, I wasn't sure I was going to have it to show you um, because uh, yeah, I just wasn't sure. And it, it just sort of happened very quickly. So um, if you've been watching my channel a while, you know that a couple of years ago, Sarah, the aforementioned stitch addict, um, she and I started a stitch along on Royal Holiday by Mirabilia almost two years ago now. Um, and we, uh, we stitched along pretty consistently with one another. We actually finished within really pretty close, um, pretty closely to when, um, we both finished right around the same time, I should say. And our hashtag for that stitch along was USNZ Royal Holiday Sal. 
And after we'd been stitching a while, a few other stitchers jumped in and joined along with us. Um, Lynn, who is Lancashire Stitcher on Floss Tube, has been um, con con continuing to stitch on her design. Um, she was part of our stitch along and she regularly, she shows updates every, um, she puts a new update out every two weeks and she's um, always showing her progress on it. She's making really great progress towards a finish and she's, it's just beautiful. The fabric she chose for hers is lovely. Um, other stitchers who have been working on this in our stitch along, Nancy Duquette, Kate the Scottish Stitcher, and Andrea Schweigert. So with mine, I finished it last, um, earlier this year, so I finished it last spring. And um, this one was, it just felt like a really special finish to me. And so I knew I wanted to, I, I normally do all of my own finishing and framing, but I knew I wanted to splurge a little bit and and really get this finished professionally and have, have it done special. And so here it is all done up. Um, okay. So isn't that exceptional? So I went ahead and sent this beauty off to Jill Rensel Framing um, and um, had just, I've just had an exceptional, um, exceptional service from them. It did take several months. I sent it to them in May or June and it literally just arrived. It was just delivered a few hours ago. Um, and so I was super, super thrilled to get it. They had, um, when they sent me my options and I picked what I wanted, um, and I kind of had an idea of what I was looking for. And so we kind of settled everything that we wanted to do with it. And they said, we'll try and get it back to you by Christmas. And I was like, that sounds fantastic. And so over the last couple of weeks, it's been in the back of my mind. I'm like, oh, I wonder how it's coming along. And I thought I thought about reaching out. And then I was like, no, if it's done, they'll send it. And if it's not, then you're just going to be adding stress. And I got an email two days ago saying, hey, it's finished. And here's what it looks like. And I was like, oh, my goodness, it's beautiful. I love it. We got the bill all settled up and it was here in less than 48 hours. So. I could not be happier with how this turned out. Um, as you can see, we did multiple layers of mats and those just really pick up on the beautiful colors in this design. Um, we had the, the painting done on the mats. I think it's Amber at the, at the studio there that does the painting. Beautiful, beautiful job. Um, and then there's also some, you know, some painting that's on some of these inner mats. Um, and one of the things that I really loved about the frame that they chose is it's the gold, but then um, in sort of the, the raised areas are gold, but then the areas in between that have a green tone to them that really picks up on the, the color of the fabric that I stitched on. And so I just, this is such an exceptional, beautiful, special finish. I absolutely love it. Um, could not be happier with it. And I am so excited. As soon as we finish filming this video, it's going up on the wall and, and it's going to have pride of place until we get through the holiday season. But just, just a lovely finish. So I'm really excited to be able to share this with you and to have it all done. Okay. Woof. Let's see. All right. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't fall over. <laughs> Oh, I jinxed myself, guys. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's switch gears. Let's talk about the whips we've been working on since the last time we filmed an update. And I'm gonna start with Gary and show you his whip. Um, so he is stitching on Captain America uh, by Awesome Pattern Studio, which is an Etsy shop. And we will include a link in the description box below. And he is stitching on 16 count pewter Ada with all the called for flosses. So Gary, over to you. Well, I don't really know what else to say. Um, anyway, this is where I am now. Um, well, I guess I should say this is where I was the last time you saw it. I was uh, just starting on page three, um, which the order I did it was page one two and then four. So page three is the last page I have to do. So I just started on page three and this is what it looks like now. Um, you got most of, I got a lot of the blue done, uh, but there's, there's a lot of blue. Um, and all the spaces that you see there, um, they, they either have blue or some other color in them. There's one square that there's no color in, but the rest of it all has to be filled in. 
Um, and I'm not even halfway down, down the uh, side there. Most of the stuff that's halfway down there is black and then another color uh, comes in. But with that said, um, I'm still, I got started on page three, which is the last page of this one, uh, which I'm looking forward to, to finishing it because there's a couple more I want to do. Uh, but that's, that's where I am right now. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I don't stitch every day, uh, which is probably why it's taken so long. But I do, when I do sit down, I try to accomplish as much as I can. Uh, but anyway, that's where it is now. And uh, I'm sorry I have nothing really funny to add. Um, <laughs> I'll work on that for the next one. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I'm, I'm finished there. <laughs> Y'all done? Yeah, 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 finished. We all like you whether you're funny or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna move right along. All right, the last whip that I have to show you is my travel stitching. And I am stitching the Noel pin pillow that is part of the Christmas cheer pin pillows by Jeanette Douglas Designs. Um, I have been slowly working through my way through each of the pillows um, that, or each of the charts that are in this, this booklet. Um, and the last time you saw the Noel pin pillow, I had made some reasonably good progress. We took it with us when we went to Hawaii. And so I had fixed my error on the border and had almost, uh, was almost getting the stitching done to meet that up. Um, I had started stitching on the word Noel and started putting in um, some of the, the greenery and the branch that the, the, the little birds are sitting on. So here's where it is right now. Uh, this is another piece I took with me to Nairobi. So I worked on it on my flights and then also on several of my layovers. Um, so as you can see, I have finished the, the main outline of the border all the way around. I've also stitched quite a bit of the flowers and the leaves that, that add a lot of detail there. Um, sorry for this hanging thread. I finished the word Noel. I've stitched in all the little black uh, music notes and have started stitching in. I've made good progress on stitching in the birds and stitched more of the greenery and the berries down here on the bottom. So I don't have a ton of stitching left. Um, to finish this particular design up. I'm not sure that it's going to get finished right away just because I don't have um, a lot of travel opportunities for stitching coming up, but we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. I might surprise myself and get this one buttoned up, but um, really, really still loving this one. I think it's just beautiful. I should have mentioned um, I am stitching all of the designs in this pack or in this chart set on a piece of 36 count Stars Hollow blend. Uh, linen by R and R Reproductions, and I'm just stitching each of them. I'm stitching all of them on the same piece of fabric. So as I finish one, I just move the move the hoop over and start the next one. Um, so I haven't done any full finishing on these. I'm going to have quite a bit of work to do to get them all made into pillows once I um, once I finish all the stitching. But this is where I am on the Noel pin pillow. Super super cute. Uh, just love that whole vintage Christmas vibe that it's got going on. Or classic Christmas, I should say. Okay, uh, that is it for active whips, but I have one more piece to show you and that is a new start. And, and the reason I have no more official whips that you've seen before is because I finished all of, I had the several finishes on everything I worked on. Um, but the last thing I have to share with you is a brand new start. Um, so because I finished my Easter by Cricut collection, I got to have a new start in my seasonal category of my rotation. And so I decided to stitch. Um, this is one I've wanted to start for a while. I'm just going to take it out of the plastic so you don't have a lot of glare. Um, but I am stitching Wildflowers by the Blue Flower. Uh, and... Um, I am having a great time with this. So before I show you how it's looking so far, I am stitching it on a piece of 36 count peaches and cream linen by Atomic Ranch Fabrics. And um, it was kind of funny choosing the fabric for this. So when I was kitting it up, I couldn't quite decide which fabric. I had three different fabric choices that I thought would work really well for it. And one was sort of a bluish gray and one was a green and then one was this peaches and cream. And so when I was getting ready to start it uh, last week, I did a floss toss and I just still couldn't make up my mind. You know, every time I thought I had decided, oh, we're going to eliminate, you know, one of the choices, then I 
then I would change my mind. And so I just couldn't make up my mind. So I asked Gary what he thought and I showed him all the options and he was kind of leaning one way or another. And then he came down and he was like, I think you should do the peaches one. And I was like, okay. And so then I had all my fabrics laid out on the couch beside me and I was moving all my flosses around and I was still dithering and Bear was just hanging out there with me. And I said, Bear, which fabric do you think I should stitch it on? And he immediately was like, he knew what I was asking. He immediately like picked up his head and he laid his little snout right down on the peaches and cream fabric. And so I was like, well, there we go. Gary picked the peaches, Bear picked the peaches. Peaches is the way to go. Um, so I thought that was kind of cute. Um, but without further ado, let me show you what I have accomplished on this so far. Uh, let's see, this is a huge piece of fabric. I think it's a fat half, um, which I don't need anywhere near that much for this design. It's not that large, so I'll have to cut it down, but I haven't done that yet. Um, so here we are. Isn't that pretty? It's such a sweet, sweet design. I really love it. Um, so this, uh, it, the chart calls for DMC and that's what I'm stitching it in. I'm using most of the called for colors. I've made a few changes, uh, mainly in the greens. So the, the greens that are called for are very brownie, olivey greens. And I just wasn't feeling that. Um, I really wanted something that was a little bit, a little bit brighter and a little bit more, um, just a different different tone. So I've, I've chosen some other DMC um, greens for this one, and they still have a little bit of an olivey tone to them, but they don't have that brownish flavor that the other ones did. The other change that I've had to make is when I did my floss toss, the white that's called for in this design is B5200. And it was showing up just fine on this fabric when I did the floss toss. When I actually started stitching with it, um, it was just not showing up at all. And so, um, which is a little bit unfortunate because I think the the white flowers, there's a number of white flowers that are charted in the design. And I think they really add, I mean, I, I think having that white spread throughout the design really adds to it. Um, and unfortunately, I'm just not able to, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Um, and so I'm switching that out and, and doing a different color of floss instead of the white. I think it's really beautiful, um, but it's, you know, I, I, in retrospect, as much as I'm loving this on this fabric, I might have chosen one of the other options if I had realized that white wasn't going to show up. But at any rate, I had a really fun time stitching this. I think it's super pretty. I think it's really sweet and it's stitching up surprisingly quickly. So really having a great time with this one so far. All right. Uh, there's one other thing I want to mention before I move out of talking about new starts. This is not a new start just yet, but I wanted to talk about it quickly because I'm planning to start a stitch along um, and I haven't decided yet. I don't know whether it's going to be started in December or whether it'll be like a new year, new start for January. Um, but I am going to be starting Blackberry House by Plum Street Samplers. And if you have this in your stash and you like it, or if you see it and you think it's as beautiful as I think it is, and would like to stitch it with me, I would love it if you would join me. Um, the reason I am gonna do this as a stitch along and the reason I'm, I'm starting this, um, one of the things that I really love, so I am I am a huge fan of Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. I really enjoy her channel. I never miss one of her videos. Um, she's just, you know, she stitches so many beautiful things. But one of the things I really love that she does is um, all the different samplers or many of the different pieces that she stitches. She either stitches them in memory of, a of friends and family members or loved ones, or she stitches them in honor of, of, of loved ones. And um, with everything that's been going on with my dad and just how difficult the last couple of months have been for him and kind of the scares that we've had with him, I really wanted to stitch a chart in honor of him. Um, and this one is particularly appropriate for that for a couple of reasons. One, um, last Christmas, this chart was a gift from my parents. And when I opened it on Christmas day, my dad was like, and some of you know my dad is also a stitcher and he was like that's really beautiful I wish I could stitch it with you and he hasn't been able to stitch much this year um, 
But knowing that he loves this chart and it was a gift from him, I thought it would be really appropriate to stitch it in his honor. Um, the other reason I want to stitch this particular chart in his honor is because the theme is blackberries. And my dad loves blackberries. My whole life, he's been the guy that wants to go out by the side of the road and pick blackberries and bring them home and like make a pie. He just loves his blackberries more than anybody I've ever met. And so it just seemed appropriate to stitch a blackberry themed chart um, to honor him and just what he's been kind of struggling with the last couple of months. So the hashtag that I'm going to use is Blackberries for Dad SAL or Blackberries for Dad Stitch Along. Um, and if you would like to join me, uh, like I said, I'm not sure, you know, you can start it whenever. Feel free to use the hashtag. Um, but if you'd like to join me, just start it whenever and um and and yeah. And, and I'd love to, I'd love to stitch this along with some other folks. Um, and you know, if you need a little bit of time to kit it up, that's fine. Um, but anyway, just wanted to invite you and show you what I'm going to be working on um, in the very near future in honor of my dad. All right, um, I have a little bit of haul to share with you, and then I think we'll be able to wrap this up pretty quickly. Um, so I recently picked up a new kit, and this was fully enabled by a couple of other floss tubers. So several months ago, um, I was telling you about Kelly from Pages and Stitches. That that is Pages Three Stitches. She's a that's her floss tube channel. And I'll link it below. And she was trying to decide a couple of months ago she was going to have a new start, and she was trying to choose between two kits. And this is one of the ones that she showed. And when she when she showed it, I was like, Oh my goodness, that's so beautiful! I love it. And it immediately went on my wish list at one two three stitch. And um, I was just kind of like mentally sitting on it like a hen on an egg for several months, but hadn't, you know, hadn't like gone ahead and gotten it yet. And then several weeks back, probably a month or so ago, Laura from Lolity Stitches, who I mentioned earlier, um, who she, she ran across this kit in our local needle workshop, which is Threadneedle Street, and she picked it up. And then she started it. And so when she picked it up, I was like, and then when she started it, I was just like, oh, and then I went and bought it. So um, this is Into Dreamland by Letty Stitch. It is such a beautiful chart. It is full coverage. I have no immediate plans to start this, but it is really, really beautiful. I absolutely love it. And so I'm super excited to have this. Um, it took a while to get here, but I think it's gonna be a really great, really fun stitch. And so, um, so yeah, that is my new haul little treat for myself. Um, so for those of you who are not interested in hearing a little bit about globe trotting, this is probably a great place to jump out. But I wanted to just tell you really quickly about um, my trip to Nairobi. I don't have a whole lot to report, to be honest, um, except to say it was a really challenging, really frustrating trip this time. Um, I won't go into any of the details on that, but it was um, this was a more difficult trip and I was really glad to be done with it. I was really glad to get home, but there was a real bright spot at the end of it that I thought would be fun to share with you guys. So um, I have been going to Nairobi for various reasons for work for the last over 10 years now. And in that time, I almost always stay at the same exact hotel. Um, and what's been one of the things that I really love about that hotel is they've got a number of folks who have been on staff there for a very long time. And there were two guys that I've known for that whole 10 year period um, named John and Solomon. And, you know, a lot of times there'll be several months or even a year or more in gap between visits to Nairobi. Um, and no matter how long it had been, John and Solomon, every time I would go and stay at the hotel, they would always remember me. They remember my name. They would ask about my family, my husband. Um, things that we had talked about, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was, they like just genuinely remembered me, which always amazed me because, you know, a lot of people go through a hotel and I'm not a particularly, and this is not like downing myself. I'm just not a particularly memorable person. And so it really meant a lot to me that that, that's, that actually is downing yourself. I do. I, and, I, and you are, what is that? I'm not oh. downing myself, but I got like a hook nose, right? Oh, I mean, come on. Right. I mean, get real. Right. I, well, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. <laughs> Just, you, you, that actually is downing yourself. I apologize. I, I, do, I don't mean it that way, but thank you. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, anyway, 
I just, it always meant a lot to me that the two of them remembered me. And so when I first went back earlier this year, you know, I mean, it had been almost three years since I'd been there. Um, but because it was the same hotel and they'd been there for all the years before, I looked for both John and Solomon when I went back to this hotel um, for my first visit back after the, you know, as we've come to coming, you know, to the phase of the, of the pandemic that we're in. And um, I didn't see either one of them. And I was super bummed and I was really kind of worried because I was just like, I don't know if they're OK. Did they get sick? You know, did they just change jobs? Um, and so, as you know, I've been back a couple of times now. And as I was checking out to go to the airport um, to come home on this last visit, um, I was, you know, paying for the thing and finishing up with the guy at the counter. And somebody came around behind him and was like, hi, Amy. And I was like, I, I stopped and I looked at the guy and I it just didn't trigger for a minute. And I looked down at his name tag and I was like, Solomon. And I was so excited. And he came around and he gave me a big hug. And um, and we just had this, it was just this wonderful little chat and catching up. And unfortunately, John has gone to another hotel. So I was super bummed about that. But I was so excited because when I was there before the pandemic, Solomon worked as a doorman and he'd been a doorman for many years. And he was promoted to management, which I was just like, oh my goodness, I'm so happy for you. But um, it was just so great to see an old friend again and catch up and to know that he's doing well and that his family's doing well. And before I left, he's like, oh, I want to give you a gift. And I was like, oh, you don't have to give me a gift. He's like, no, I want to give you a gift. And so he came back um, with this little box. Now, one of the things that this hotel does that I think is really neat is every night when they come, you know, they offer a turn down service. And so they come and they turn down your room and get it ready so you can go to bed. And when they do that, they have these little um, these little safari animals that are made out of soapstone and they're bright. Usually most of them are brightly colored. And, you know, it's your classic safari animals. It's lions and and gir giraffes and hippos and rhinos and, and all of this. And so they just leave a little animal by your bedside when they turn it down at night. And so because I've been staying there for so many years and I've been there so many times, I have like multiple sets of all of the animals um, already, but they have a special boxed set that they that they um, that they have that you can get. And I don't have the boxed set like in the actual box. And so that's what Solomon gave me was the special boxed set, um, which is really cool. The box is made out of dried banana leaf and it's got all seven of the animals. So I'll just show you a couple of them because um, they're just really, really cool. But ah. There's a lion and um, a blue elephant. And I just, I love these, this guy here, this cute little red hippo. And um, yeah, so they're, they're just made out of soapstone and they're just really fun. They're really sweet. And it was just at the end of a really challenging visit, frankly. Um, it was this wonderful bright spot you know, the gift itself was lovely, but just reconnecting with someone who's an old friend who I've, you know, wondered about and worried about um, just was such a special thing and such a great way to kind of end that trip. And so I thought I would share that with you guys because I thought that was really cool. And it was so fun to get the set of the whole set of animals in the box. And so um, that was really special. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of it for as far as what we have to share with you today. So we'll just quickly wrap up by telling you what we're going to work on over the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to spend a, a week working on my full coverage piece, which is Rose Trellis In by Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, I am hoping to make some more headway into that fourth row of pages. And so really looking forward to working on that. Um, I'm also going to spend a week working on my fancy lady, uh, which is my conversion on Celtic winter. And so really looking forward, hoping I get some good time in on her because she's been sort of neglected the last couple of months. Um, I, as I said, I may get to my, my Christmas cheer pin pillow, but we'll see. I'm not sure about that one. And um, I think Gary is going to put in some more time on Captain America. The other big thing that's going on around here is we are fully in the swing of trying to get ready for Christmas. So um, this weekend, we're going to be doing all the Christmas decorating. And um, we are I am also trying to, to catch up on getting my Christmas cookies, my dough made, which I'm really behind on because this fall has just been so much. But 
Um, so yeah, that's what we've got going on. Um, those of you in the United States who celebrate, we hope you've had a great Thanksgiving. Um, and so we'll look forward to seeing you in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, we hope that you stay well, that you stay safe, um, and that you're really enjoying your stitching. If you enjoy our videos, I do hope that you'll give us a thumbs up. It does help us to find new viewers uh, through YouTube's algorithm. So please do, please do hit that little thumbs up. Um, we do enjoy your comments and interacting with you. So please leave a comment, say a quick hello to us. We always enjoy that. And um, if you hit the little bell, you'll get notifications anytime we post a new update. You can also follow me between videos on Instagram. I'm globetrotting underscore stitcher, or you can send me an email to globetrottingstitcher at gmail.com. So with all of that, uh, we look forward to seeing you soon and happy stitching. Bye-bye.